Hey, it's Dougie from Valto, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about when to use SharePoint or when to use OneDrive. Also, stick around to the end, and I'm going to be giving you an extra bonus tip about file storage inside of Microsoft 365. So, I made this video because I still get people asking me about where documents should live and the purposes um, of the use of SharePoint and the use of OneDrive. So let's start off by talking a bit about SharePoint. So in the context of what we're talking about here, SharePoint, I'm going to be referring to it as a intranet portal. So SharePoint, think of it as like the internal website in which that you can offer up almost like a single source of truth of information that you want to give to your wider organization. So let's take a little look at an example of what a SharePoint intranet portal would look like. So this is a sample intranet. And as I say, intranets are typically available to everyone in the organization for them to be able to get access to key documents. So documents which live in SharePoint are most likely documents that have been worked on and collaborated outside of the SharePoint platform either in a OneDrive or Microsoft Teams or somewhere else, and then it's been published essentially to SharePoint. Um, now, this intranet is known as a communication site um, because it's for communicating information. In fact, they used to be called publishing sites for that reason because you were publishing content to a wider organization. Um, so as a typical intranet, as you say, it would be broken out into maybe departmental areas um, or information for managers, um, self-service information for from human resources and things like that. But of course, all these types of files and documents are not being updated on a daily basis. They are being published and maybe altered every now and again. A SharePoint page would likely help users get to other types of materials as well, like policies and procedures. Quite often, these are presented in a area of SharePoint which is easy to access so everyone knows where to go because there's nothing worse in an organization than finding that you need to find some information like a policy but you don't know where to find it or maybe there's duplicates or there's old copies or I've got one version of it and someone else has got an old version of it from an email or something like that and that's where this concept of a single source of truth comes from that this SharePoint platform is being used as a place so everyone knows that the latest version of a document can be found in this location. It might also be used for things like marketing materials or branded documents, um, letter headers, proposal documents, templates that you're using as part of your day-to-day -day business. Or it could be forms in the same way. So say for example, you've got an expense request form. Um, occasionally these might change or there might be sort of information in them that, that needs to change. So the finance team might have an area of SharePoint, they have a departmental site, and they look after the expense request form, and it stays there, and everyone knows that's where they go to get that particular form. So again, that's where SharePoint comes into play, it's a public area for your organization to go and get that information. But SharePoint is also providing um, things like news, information, um, graphs, charts, who to contact, upcoming events, things like that. We could even embed Power Apps or other third-party type of applications um, for extending the functionality that a user has got from their intranet. Um, another really important part of SharePoint is about helping people navigate and find things. And that's not just files and folders. It's also the kind of applications they're using as part of a day-to-day -day basis. So it might be, say, for example, they need to raise an IT support ticket. Now, SharePoint is this kind of internal platform where you can ideally have this as their like landing page when they open their browser in, in the morning so they can get the latest information and news articles. They can get to the types of documents they need to on a day-to-day -day basis. But they've also got this navigational option. So if they needed to raise an IT support ticket, they could click on this and this could take them through either to a Power App or maybe it's going through to a third-party product um, like Zendesk or Freshdesk or something like that um, or ServiceNow to raise a support ticket. Maybe it's linking out to videos, which is in Stream or... Um, Vimeo or one of these other platforms where, where you could have training videos. Maybe it's information on how to connect to a VPN. 
So it's a page on SharePoint which are linking them to that they can get access um, to understand how to use your company's VPNs. Maybe it's submitting expense requests and linking out to a third-party platform, HR platforms. Um, maybe it's linking out to uh, payroll systems, uh, request annual leave systems, holiday systems. These could also be Power Apps, um, which actually, if you're interested in, um, Valto do actually have pre-built Power App solutions for both of these uh, requirements. Or it's just opening Microsoft Teams or other types of applications that you expect your employees to be using on a day-to-day -day basis. So, as I say, SharePoint is that platform where you can navigate, um, you can find content on a day-to-day -day basis that makes the employee's life easier because you're making it so much easier to find the things that they need to use as part of their day-to-day -day job. So, in comparison to SharePoint, we're now going to be talking about OneDrive. Now, in comparison... SharePoint, as I say, is a publishing platform. I hesitate to say collaboration platform because although, yes, you can collaborate on it, um, Microsoft Teams is kind of becoming that new collaborational space. And SharePoint is more about the publication of information. It's about making sure people can find things easily. Whereas OneDrive is more of a kind of... Um, self-storage area. So the way that I try and explain the difference between, say, SharePoint and OneDrive is that think of it from an old school kind of, um, sort of IT systems where maybe you had a map drive or a share drive. A lot of people still remember referring to things like, oh, the Y drive or the Z drive or things like that, which are essentially just map drives to a, a file server. Um, that was SharePoint. That was where you had your forms, your policies, your procedures, things like that. Whereas your local machine, your OneDrive, um, basically back then that would have been kind of the equivalent of using the kind of C drive, which is like where your documents live or your pictures live or things like that. And that's essentially what OneDrive is now. Um, it's where you store your own documents. Um, and although you can share them out to other people, OneDrive is a location where this is where your kind of like main sort of document dumping ground of documents only you are working on, drafts, maybe images that you're putting together for um, presentations and things like that. So let's jump in and take a quick look at OneDrive. So there's almost two different interfaces for OneDrive. And this is where some people um, aren't clear what is OneDrive. So OneDrive has two interfaces. It has the interface through a web portal, so through a web browser, and you can get to this, and this is what I'm looking at on screen at the moment. You can get to this by going to www.office.com, which is the home page of Microsoft 365, then by clicking on the app launcher across the top, and then selecting OneDrive, that will bring you to this interface. The second type of interface is through File Explorer. So if you open File Explorer on your computer, you'll notice that you'll have your kind of name followed by your company name. So I've got Valto Limited here um, on the left-hand side of File Explorer. And that is your uh, company OneDrive, essentially. So you'll see the exactly the same folders um, in exactly the same order through this interface. However, you're not going to get the same experience as you would do through the browser interface. There are features in the browser that you can use that you can't use through the File Explorer interface. So the browser interface gives you things like recent documents you've opened, so the For You area. You've got the Recent area, which you can filter by the type of document, whether it's Word, Excel, PowerPoint. You can see when you last opened it and was working on it. Activity from colleagues that might have been working on that document recently as well. You can filter by name or by person. So you can find documents that you've personally been working on very simply and quickly using this interface. Um, you can also use features like the shared option. Now the shared option inside of the OneDrive um, browser interface allows you to go and find documents which have been shared with you by other colleagues. So say for example you received a message someone said oh uh, Dougie did you manage to take a look at that document that I shared with you yesterday and I might say oh no sorry um, I haven't had a chance for that. 
um, I could go into here and quickly find the documents that have been recently shared with me to find that. So it doesn't matter where that document's been shared from, whether it be Teams message, uh, in an email, whether they've copied the link to me, it will show up within here. Also importantly, I can also go and see uh, files I've shared to other people. So shared by you is essentially the, 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 the documents I've shared out to other people. So this is a great way of going in and double checking that actually the files that I think that I've sent out to people um, are correct and nobody has access to files that I that I don't want them to have access to. We've also got a favorites area. Um, so anything that we've um, previously favorited by clicking on this star icon next to it, we can find favorite documents. And we can also find the recycle bin. So this is any documents which um, I've previously deleted. I can go back and I can restore it from that previous area. So as I say, OneDrive is your personal document storage space. And um, I do advocate that people make the most of using OneDrive because everybody gets up to a terabyte worth of storage space. And I do bang on about this in my videos because it's really important that you make the most of this storage space. Because to put this into perspective, say for example, if you're working in an organization which has got say 200 employees, the way that the storage space for things like SharePoint and Teams are calculated is based on the amount of employees um, pooled together. So let's say on average, maybe that type of organization, that size, would have maybe two terabytes worth of storage space for the whole of the, the, the organization for SharePoint and Teams combined. So all the files which live in those collaborational and public spaces combined might only have, say, two terabytes worth of space. Whereas for 200 employees, that's a potential of 200 terabytes of OneDrive storage space. So do make sure that you're storing documents in the right place. If a document is just for your use, store it in OneDrive. If the document is being published out to the wider organization um, and it's something that isn't going to change all that often, then use SharePoint. But this then brings me on to my final tip. Where could possibly be the third place in Microsoft 365 that you could store files? And this is now moving towards that collaborational space. And I can almost hear a few people screaming out already what this, this additional place will, uh, is. And of course, it's Microsoft Teams. So Microsoft Teams is now the collaborational space and it's the final part of this puzzle when we're talking about where we should store our documents inside of Microsoft 365. So if you imagine um, a bit of a kind of flow chart of where documents would kind of go, um, if you imagine the beginning of that is typically OneDrive and maybe the end where sort of a document is published to the whole organization is SharePoint as an internet platform, the middle piece is Teams, where the collaborational space happens, where the feedback takes place, where the edits and, and things like that take uh, take over. So sometimes documents might be created directly in Teams, and that's fine. It doesn't Not everything has to start in OneDrive. But let's say, for example, if we were working on a policy document, um, a typical life cycle of that policy document might be that I start off working on it for the first week or so in my OneDrive. I'm drafting things up and comparing it against other policies, I'm looking up other things in, in, in other areas, I'm working on it inside my OneDrive, then I transition it and put it into my team, so I, I'm collaborating it, uh, on it with my colleagues and saying, what do you think of this, can you give me some feedback, um, uh, and things like that, and I'm making edits to the document, other people are collaborating and working on that document at the same time as me, which is referred to as co-authoring. So we've co-authored that document together, we're happy with it, we now want to publish it, now we transition it into SharePoint as the final place where that document will live and everyone else will be able to get access to it. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, of course, like the video, subscribe to our channel for more SharePoint and Microsoft 365 content. If you've got any questions, comment them below, but also, if you need any help in deploying any of the products that we've talked about today, Valto offer fully managed services for deploying SharePoint, consulting, um, working with you on adoption and training plans. So reach out to us today to book your free consultation meeting and we can discuss how we can support you um, by deploying these products. Thank you for watching and keep your eyes peeled for future Valto videos.